So in order to understand Keynesian economic theory, the way that I'm going to describe it to you, you have to first understand a very important concept and component from Keynesian economic theory, and it's called the marginal propensity to consume. I'm going to give you a definition for it first, then we'll talk about it. The marginal propensity to consume is the additional amount of money that consumers will spend when they receive one more dollar of income. Okay, so this word marginal in economics is a very, very important word. The word marginal means when there's one more of something, something happening, okay? We like to, in economics, we like to observe changing phenomena based on one unit at a time. We like to get in really close and see when one more thing is added, what happens? Okay, now let's add one more. Now what happens? And so, whenever you see this word marginal, you'll usually see the phrase one more, okay? Now, what is what marginal are we looking at here? Well, this is the marginal propensity. The word propensity means like, uh, like the likelihood of something happening, or like if I have the propensity to eat um, taquitos, then um, that means that I am very likely to eat taquitos. I, 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 am, I tend to eat taquitos. I am drawn to eat taquitos. Uh, so this idea of propensity, marginal propensity, is like the likelihood when one more thing happens. Well, it's the likelihood to what? The likelihood to consume, okay? And so people, individuals, households, what is their... What is their likelihood to consume when they get one more dollar of income? Well, that all depends. If people, you know, if they're in, in a mood in their brain, if they're in a frenzy to spend lots of money, then for every additional dollar they get, they might spend the whole thing. So the marginal propensity to consume may be uh, one. Okay, that means for every one dollar that they earn in income, they spend one dollar in consumption. On the other hand, what if a person spends, let's say that, that when, and when I, now when I say people, I don't mean just one person, I mean all of the people. And so let's say that people out there in the economy, let's say that they get a, an additional one hundred dollars in income. Okay, and then across the economy, every single household, each person winds up earning $100 in income more than they used to. And then we find that in general, after that happens, each person also increased their consumption spending by $93 in consumption. Okay, so when... When their consumption went up by $93 after they got $100 in income, well, now we can calculate the marginal propensity to consume. The additional about amount of money that consumers spent was $93 when they received $100 in income. So for every $1 that they earned in income, they spent 93 cents of it. Well, how do we come up with that formula? Well, we have a formula. I'm going to put it over here. MPC, the marginal propensity to consume in an economy, is calculated by looking at the change in consumption in the economy divided by the change in income in the economy. So if we can identify a change in income, we can put that in the denominator, and then if we can observe a change in consumption in the economy, we can put that in the numerator, okay? And so um, when we say, I said $100 in income for each person, and then each person increased 
uh, $93 in consumption. But what's really going to happen is you're going to take the total change in all consumption in the economy and divide it by the total change in all income in the economy. So what you're more likely to see is this, is that the marginal propensity to consume goes like this. Let's say that consumption spending increased by $93 million after income increased by $100 million. Well, when we do this division, the millions cancel each other out, and all we have to do is 93 divided by 100. Now, you can grab a calculator and do that if you want to, but I know the answer to this. 93 divided by 100 is 0.93. And therefore, after doing this calculation, we can identify the marginal propensity to consume. MPC is 0.93 in the economy. And this marginal propensity to consume would permeate the entire economy, or at least that is basically what the theory is saying, that this is sort of a, a somewhat stable uh, per, um, uh, metric or a somewhat stable multiplier for every time income goes up in the economy, consumption will go up by this factor. Whenever income goes down in the economy, consumption will go down by this factor. So this is a factor that manages the effect of income affecting consumption. And so it's happening kind of in the middle here. As income changes and then consumption changes, it happens according to the marginal propensity to consume. And in this example, that is 0.93. And then we can then predict what's going to happen to consumption based on whatever happens to income. So what I want to do now is I want to do a few examples of this marginal propensity to consume because I want to make sure that you are able to make calculations using the marginal propensity to consume. All right, so here is a table, just a small table. Per, uh, later on in another segment, you're going to see a much larger table that includes income and consumption. So we're zooming in on a, on a larger table, and we can see here that income is going up by 100 at a time. Now, let's assume that this is in billions, or it could be in millions or something like that, and it's in dollars, okay? Uh, but all of that is irrelevant for now. Uh, to calculate the marginal propensity to consume, if we want to know what the marginal propensity to consume is, uh, here's what we're going to do. We have to identify the change, in the change in consumption. So how much did change in consumption, uh, or how much change in consumption was there? Now, the way that you calculate a change in something is you take the newer calculation or the newer number and subtract away the older number of that. And you've seen that already when you did, do you remember back when you, you um, calculated percentage change in something like percentage change in the uh, CPI to identify the inflation rate? Okay. We did new minus old divided by old. Well, this new minus old, that was the change in CPI. So anytime you want to do a change in a variable, you just do the new number minus the old number. It's kind of like from algebra when you would do slope and you would do change in y over change in x. And the way you did that was you would do y2 minus y1. That's the new y minus the old y divided by x2 minus x1. That's the new x minus the old x. That's how we ca calculate consumption is we take the new consumption and subtract away the old consumption. And so in this particular case, to calculate marginal propensity to consume, our new consumption is 89.85, so 89.85 minus 8,900, minus 8,900 divided by, now we want the change in income. So for the same lines, don't go to a different line, for the same lines, we're going to do new income, 14,800, minus old income, 14,700. And here's what we have. In the numerator, 8985 minus 8900, that's 85. You can do it in a calculator, you'll see I'm right. 
14,800 minus 14,700, that is 100. And now if we do 85 divided by 100, if you want to do that in a calculator, that's fine. But I know that the answer is going to be 0.85. And what this basically means, so the marginal propensity to consume is 0.85, is that for every additional dollar spent in the economy, or excuse me, let me back that up, sorry. For each additional dollar earned in income in the economy, 85 cents out of that dollar will be spent. Now you may ask, what's going to happen to the other 15 cents? The other 15 cents is probably going to be put into savings and it's going to be a part of the credit market, which will then be borrowed by investors to also be spent. Okay, But consumers are only going to spend 85 cents out of every dollar they earn. Okay, So now here's my next question. If we know that the marginal propensity to consume is 0.85, can we identify consumption on the next line, which is 14,900? Okay, well, yes, we can. Now, as, as long as we can predict how much it's going up by, and we can, we can find the change in income. So the way that you find consumption, if you want to calculate consumption for one particular line, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the marginal propensity to consume times the change in income. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add that to the previous consumption. Okay? And so another way of thinking about it goes like this. Consumption on a particular line N is going to be marginal propensity to consume times the change in income plus the previous consumption, which we can call n minus 1. Okay? So in this case, we're trying to find the consumption for this row right here, 14,900, and what is the consumption that goes with it? I made that box just a little bit high. Let's bring it down just a little bit here. Okay? So we want to find out what the consumption is that goes there. Well. The first thing we're going to need is the marginal propensity to consume, which is 0.85. So we're going to go 0.85 times the change in income. Okay, well, what's our change in income here? 14,900 or 14,900 minus 14,800. That's a 100 change. So times 100. And then we're going to add that to the previous consumption, which was 89.85. So 8,985. 0.85 times 100, that's 85 plus 89.85. If you want to do this in a calculator, I'm going to go ahead and do it in my head. So I'm going to put five more on here, 90 plus 80. That's going to be 9,070. So this is going to become 9,070. That would be the consumption for an income of 14,900. Okay? Let's try another example. All right, here's another example. Let's identify the marginal propensity to consume. Didn't make it as easy this time. Uh, and then also let's identify what the consumption will be when income is 30,000. Okay, so marginal propensity to consume, we need the change in consumption. The calculator here. So the change in consumption here is going to be, um, we've got to do 13, or excuse me, 17,500. Minus 13,750, that's going to be 3,750. And our change in income here looks like it's 5,000, right? Okay, so we just got to do 3,750 divided by 5,000. Divided by 5,000 gives us 0 0.75. So the marginal propensity to consume is 0.75. Once we have 0.75, uh, we can look at the change in in income here, which again is 5,000. So we're going to multiply the change in income, 5,000, times the marginal propensity to consume, 0 0.75, which is 3,750. Then we're going to add that to the consumption here, plus 17,500, and we get 21,250. And that is how we identify the marginal propensity to consume and calculate the next line of consumption given a line of income. Let's do just one more example. All right, so now in this situation, 
Uh, we're not going to calculate marginal propensity to consume. We're just going to say that it's 0.81. That's the marginal propensity to consume. And where we have a couple lines here for income. We know that when income is 30,000, consumption is 18,700. But when income goes up to 34,000, we want to know what consumption is going to be. Okay. So if you want to try that just for a second, pause the video and then come back. All right. So uh, here's what we have. Change in 4,000 here. Change in income of 4,000. We need to multiply that by the marginal propensity to consume. So 4,000 times 0.81. That gives us 3,240. 3,240. That's going to be our change in consumption. We're going to add that to 18,700. And we get 21,940. Okay. All right, so this is marginal propensity to consume. I hope you feel very comfortable with the idea, very comfortable with the calculations.